Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency tutorial where I'm going to take a look at a really interesting tool which is called Subscan and Subscan is used for the Polkadot ecosystem. It's like a blockchain explorer but it really is more than that because you can also analyze the data here. You can actually see charts, you can see how many uh, stakers there are for various networks within the Polkadot ecosystem and that's really interesting in my opinion because here you can actually track down to see the interest that the community has towards a specific project within the Polkadot ecosystem. So without further ado, let's get straight in here. And again, the link will be found in the description of this video. It is called subscan.io. Uh, but what you can do, the first thing you can do when you actually go to the link, uh, you can click on the drop down here on the top right hand corner, which shows you all the different networks within the Polkadot ecosystem that Subscan supports. Again, not all of them are supported by Subscan, but whatever you see in Polkadot.js, uh, which is the official web wallet for Polkadot, which I've already done a tutorial on. If you're new and you haven't watched it, do check it out. It should pop up on the top right-hand corner if you're watching this on YouTube. And um, yeah, so basically here you can see the different networks. And we're actually on the Rokoku V1, which means the networks that are ready to be connected to the parachains once they successfully bond as a parachain. And of course, they need to wait for the auctions. Some of them are common good parachains, which means they don't need the auctions. They'll just bond as soon as the parachain code is ready. And uh, it's likely going to happen before the parachain auctions. That's when we're likely going to see the common good parachains connect. But again, I don't know. This is just my assumption. Now, this is what we can see are currently connected here. We can see that we've got seven networks connected. Now Darwinia is not actually connected. Chainx is not actually connected. As I initially thought, I actually initially thought that Darwinia was connected, but it's not. I was wrong about that. But we've got 11 in the proposal section here. So actually, if you go to uh, all here on the parachain status, we can see the Rokoko V1 relay chain. We can see we've got 100 total slots seven parachains which are ready to be connected and 11 of them are proposed so here we can see we've got fala network bifrost zenlink akala plasm crust and hydra dx but darwinia is not here yet and if we go to the proposal section we can see here that we've got patrick jupiter or one we've got data highway tidal i'm not sure what this is Ares, i'm not sure what this is bit country i haven't heard of it polka btc is part of interlay which is the common good parachain for polka btc which is going to be the bridge between bitcoin and polka dot think of it kind of like a competitor to chainx and to ren and then we've got chainx itself and also starks and so on and here we can actually see the batches that they're gonna get deployed as so we can see that the ones that are on waiting stage are these ones here data highway tie dot and we've got the uh, encounter in Cointer, and also lintry uh or, or or light entry sorry light entry rostock is also uh, it's, it's actually an identity protocol here i haven't actually looked into them i need to start looking into them and then we've got Kilt as well, which are not even waiting here, which is surprising because I was pretty sure Kilt was connected as a parachain already. So it just looks a bit strange to me now when you see that they're actually down as a proposal, but they're not officially connected. Okay, they are not officially connected. This, this is what we have connected at the moment. Now, Chainx, of course, uh, we don't actually have uh, a logo here. Uh, neither do we have one for Starks, but it is what it is, right? The important thing is that they're in the proposal section and we're going to see them connected when their turn comes. Of course, we're going to see Starks first. So actually, what's good now is that because we've got something to look at, we can actually keep an eye out on this, maybe check this every week or so and see if this list gets updated. If we're going to have eight connected parachains like Starks, then we could expect, of course, Chainx to go next together with Patriot. But enough about that. Let's actually look at the cool tools that we've got available for us now with Subscan. So aside from actually, if you go to home here uh, and then, no, you need to select a network. So if you select a network, let's say you select Polkadot because this is the king of the ecosystem. And here we've got the block explorer, okay? So if you click on the drop down here, you can choose to search for anything. You could choose to search for a specific block for an account and so on. But anyway, if you paste a public address here, if you copy it and paste it in here, uh, then you can just search and it's going to find information on that on that public address, such as the holdings that you've got and also the transactions that have taken place on that account. 
So that's pretty cool, right? So use for analyzing the data pretty much. And uh, we can see here the token status. So we've got 329.4 million in circulation at the moment, and that's 31.1% of the total supply. 65.6% .6 is in staking. So a lot of people are staking Polkadot. A lot of these people that are staking Polkadot are not going to be able to take part in the parachain auctions if the parachain auctions are not announced with more than one month notice because you as you know you have to wait 28 days before you can unbound your polka dot which is staked to a validator uh, to unbound it in order to transfer it in order to use it for bidding you cannot bid if the dot is not available in your wallet if it's not transferable basically because you need to lock it up you need to reserve it for up to two years when you're actually bidding for a parachain so a lot of these people are not planning to take part in the parachain auctions with this stake some of them probably are, but I'm guessing that some people are probably just keeping those DOT available in their wallets in preparation for the parachain auctions, while some are just staked for the long term to generate those dividends, especially if they got in early, right? The humongous gains are well worth it, especially because uh, we know that DOT was like trading at 280, just under $3 back around, I think it was July or August of last year. Can't remember the exact date yet but nevertheless it's grown significantly and of course we've got others here uh, which is the unbounding the democracy the election the reserved uh, which is 3.2 percent uh, 33.98 million as you can see here of the uh, total supply so that is interesting data here and actually if you go to tools and you go to charts this is one that i find interesting especially for uh, staking so here you can see this is the daily transaction amount for dot so this is from today we've got 13,566,000 transactions uh, 14 million on the 19th it dipped a bit so this is good right because this shows you the historical chart of the transactions now if you go to the daily bond value here you can see how many dot gets staked every day so yeah here we have 3 million dot that were staked as you can see we had even more here on this spike 5,200,000 and uh, it dropped significantly actually dropped significantly 198,000 yesterday only 143,000 and today 159,000 so yeah as you can see here we had this humongous spike in staking dot perhaps it is institutional investors perhaps because this this spike is humongous i mean from 885,000 to 5.2 million i mean that is a lot of dot that started getting staked so yeah that's the daily bonding value and uh, we can see the unbounding as well not so much not so many people are unbounding seven hundred fourteen thousand one point five million here on the 15th and uh, it's pretty stable here it's pretty stable around the 100,000 range right so yeah this is really useful and of course you can see the daily fees and so on but uh, what's interesting is not only can you check the Polkadot ones, but like I said, you can check other networks. So we've got Kusama here, exactly the same for Kusama. If you go to charts uh, and you can see how much is being staked every single day. So again, you can see 62,000 uh, Kusama, 599 Kusama have been staked on the 16th and then a huge dip, 10,000 here, 8,000 and so on. But you got to remember that Kusama is very expensive as well when it comes to buying it in terms of dollar value uh, now let's look at chain next year and check the staking so this is where uh, there are people in their telegram group which have a telegram bot that's linking to subscan so basically it can report the staking assets so here you can see at a quick glimpse that 77.9 percent of all pcx have been staked uh, 1k is in the other section which is like 0.0 percent is basically less than 0.0 percent and that's why it's shown as 0, 0.0 here and the in circulation only 22 percent so only 2 million pcx let that sink in only 2 million pcx are in circulation and that's mostly on exchanges so now you can understand why it's so easy to move the price all they need is an exchange listing a big exchange listing like binance or hobi or okx and boom the rocket is going to take off so that's awesome uh, now let's take a look at darwin as well and see how that looks uh, we've got 139 million in staking so 6.8 percent and again this is not uh, i think this is a mixed staking i think this is mixed staking i don't know if this includes katon 
and ring or just ring right so let's go to tools here let's go to charts and let's take a look okay so i think it's both i think it could be a combination because here you can see we've got a daily bond value for ring and the daily bond value for keton so keton is the one that's most profitable when you stake so you can see here we had a humongous spike on the 20th two days ago 1286 keton have been staked 958 and today it dropped significantly to only 155 so we had some days where we only had like under 100 as you can see here see under 100 very very low 50 20 28 290 but yeah we did have this we had this humongous spikes here and this is probably related to the apy because not too long ago when the darwinia team had an ama on the polka warriors telegram group they posted a diagram a photo a table with uh, with the staking rewards with the apy for staking keton which was over 100 percent and i've i've taken that photo and i've used that in a recent video uh, where i've explained to you that apy and then how much ring you can get so it's it's humongous right right now it's like around 1.9 ring from what i saw based on the calculator because you can set the payment to be every two days uh, that's the minimum that i saw in the wallet i don't know if there's if it's possible to configure that but the minimum i saw was two days so every two days you can actually get paid to a specific address and if you don't specify that address that you want to get paid at uh, then you will get uh, you, it will get restaked so the ring that you generate will get restaked and then if you want to unbound it you have to wait 14 days i believe because that's how long you have to wait for keton to unbound so just be careful there to set your payout address to a specific address of your choosing so you can get paid every two days uh, in case you want to sell those staking rewards maybe you have maybe you plan to reinvest in something else or for various reasons right maybe you just want to maybe you're staking keton as a side it's like a side job right whatever you're gaining from staking keton is uh, is like your second income so yeah just uh, just make sure that you always set that address to a specific address that you want to get paid at so that you don't restake if you don't want to again if you want to that's fine you can just leave it as it is uh, so um, let's take a look at the daily bond value for ring here so here we can see six million five hundred thirty seven thousand and then a huge dip only 72,000 and we had another huge spike 6 million again and then down to 830,000 and then 100,000 so yeah roughly around 100,000 most of the days and then we have these spikes now and again which are humongous with a large amount of ring getting staked so yeah people are just accumulating ring as you can see here but yeah nevertheless it's uh, it's really handy to see this and again we've got Kulupu here we've got equilibrium stuffy as well now the staking section the staking section is uh, basically just showing you all the different validators so you can see the number one ranked validator is rainbow uh, we can see Phelon here i recognize him from chinex he's also running a validator on chinex uh, phoenix who's the uh, darwinia admin and uh, yeah this is pretty much how it looks here yeah, there isn't anything else but yeah i mean this tool is awesome this tool is awesome because you can see what the staking uh, percentage is at the moment you can get a general feel if people are on staking if people are happy if they're unhappy if there's fomo if uh, the hype is dying out you know it's 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 really good to to take a look at these kind of charts just to analyze the data and to have some kind of image about what's going on within the polkadot ecosystem so yeah again link can be found in the description of this video do check it out let me know what you think in the comments below will you be using subscan now and again to check the status of the uh, of the stakes just to understand what's going on and uh, if not let me know why but uh, that's it from today's video thank you for watching i'll see you in my next video take care bye, -bye.